Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul. And I'm very happy to be connecting with you today. It is November 8th. It is a Thursday. And it is the day after the elections here in, uh, day or two after them here in America. And very clearly, we need a lot more light to capture and to hold on to. There's a lot of unhappy people in the world today. And we need to open our heart more to love and more to light. Learn how to hold on to it. So I'm very grateful for all of you joining me here today. It will be a day filled with love and light and great opportunity to learn a few tools and techniques to hold on to that love and light. So thank you for coming and thank you for sharing. Yesterday was a very, very busy day for me. I'm sure it was for most of us. A lot of responsibilities to take care of. But I look forward to these times to connect with each of you twice a week. Three times a week now if you add my Sunday uh, chanting ladies and harmony uh, answer for others. It's always a great value to be able to, to come and connect because it gives me a chance to disconnect from all of the other responsibilities of life. Welcome Maria, welcome Dan, welcome Kristen. Thank you all for your presence. It's very appreciated. And so also, um, yesterday I was working with some clients and working with opening their heart and teaching them to maintain the light. So I'll share with you some of those wisdoms that came through in working with those clients truly a good opportunity. <coughs> Let me check who's joined us so far. Welcome Marcia, welcome uh, Steve Keen, and welcome also to Maria Dean and Terry Aloha Crane. Welcome to everybody. I hope you have an enjoyable weekend coming up. Here at Master Shah's Tao Healing Center in Honolulu, for those that are interested, there is a Soul Mind Body Alignment Workshop. And I did teach on that not too long ago. Uh, actually, it was on Master Shah's page. I did a two uh, hour long presentations explaining what is Soul Mind Body Alignment, what is Shen Chi Jing, and how do you align them. Uh, of course, it's a snippet of information compared to the uh, couple of days of dedicated, committed time to your uh, soul that you would have if you chose to join this weekend. But I encourage you to learn more going to uh, uh, Hawaii's drshaw.com website. And Kristen, thank you Kristen for joining, is my assistant. She'll probably find that link shortly and put it in for those that are interested. It is the pre, uh, prerequisite to becoming a Tao Hands healer. And uh, one of the great values of becoming a Tao Hands healer is you can offer extraordinary uh, life-saving, potentially life-saving blessings to your children, your parents, people you care about. Uh, but there's a prerequisite, which is the Soul Mind Body Alignment Workshop. So I encourage all of you to learn more about that. So welcome also Tracy Perriman. Welcome Jota, welcome Dean, Aloha, Vanessa, uh, anybody else I may have missed, welcome Archana, thank you all for coming. So while Facebook is gathering a few more souls, I will go ahead and start this connection, placing our hands in the prayer position or the soul light, soul service hand position, whichever is most comfortable for you. Uh, and then I'll call forth the beings of light to prepare for the receiving of this light and how to hold on to it. Dear all the beings of light, our beloved Creator, all of those serving the plan of the light side, including the angels, healing angels, archangels, the masters and ascended masters, gurus, lamas, sifus, saints, buddhas, and bodhisattvas, dear beloved Jesus and Mother Mary, beloved Krishna, Vanesha, Ganesha, the beloved Muhammad, the beloved Amitofu Buddha, the beloved Kuan Yin, and more beings of light, our individual heavens teams, 
We love you all, honor you all, respect you all. We ask most humbly and sincerely for your presence at this time. And we ask that you bless us today, that we can gather this light and sustain this light. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Dear the song of love, peace, and harmony, love you, honor you, appreciate you. Please turn on as we sing together one round of love, peace, and harmony. Please bless us to open our hearts, develop our light. Please bless us to further awaken to how we can gather it and keep it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So let us chant, let us serve. Lula, lula, li, 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 lula, lula, English. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. The feet. And harmony, love, peace, and harmony. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. So thank you all for coming. Welcome, Ulrike. Welcome, uh, Diane, Victoria. Welcome, Vanessa. Welcome, Corrado. Uh, welcome, everyone else whose names I may have missed. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing so that others can know about this. There are so many people today that are getting lost. And they are being, um, what's the word? They are being mentally and emotionally uh, pulled in many different directions. And this moves them away from the light. There is an agenda that everybody seems to have for you and your attention. Some people's agenda is this or that political perspective. Some people's agenda is by this, by that. Some people's agenda has to do with uh, something that is of value to you, truly. Some people's agenda is simply to make you miserable. In this world of seven billion people, we have moved away from the light and moved towards selfishness. We have moved away from the light in almost every case, accidentally, and without a lot of conscious reckoning. In other words, we don't even realize we moved away from the light. Uh, it happens in many different ways. Uh, probably 30-40% of you are watching this on your telephone, possibly listening on your telephone. And as much as I appreciate and I'm using my telephone now for this live stream, it is a source of taking the light away. Now what else? Watching the news takes our light away. I have a friend that lives in Colorado and she um, was here in Hawaii. She moved back to Colorado and so she's staying with her parents. Her parents blast the uh, news channels 24-7 and the news channels regardless of which one you're listening to are uh, just filled with emotional and mental stressful uh, communications this drains the light so there are literally uh, sources all around us that have an agenda and if you look at their various agendas it's very difficult to find any one of them that are there to build our light, to assist us to grow our light and sustain our light. 
we literally have to be conscious enough to choose uh, to give our time to those things that support our life versus take it away. And it can be exceedingly difficult because um, there is so much coming at us 24-7 that there's just very little time, at least our mind thinks that, to give ourselves light-filled conditions. So the first part of giving ourselves the opportunity to find and sustain light is identifying what is sucking the light from us. Very simple if you think about it, right? So everybody, take a moment. Really, take a moment, close your eyes, and I'll walk you through identifying some of those things. Close your eyes. And let's go back to yesterday. What happened yesterday? Were you a light-filled being? Did you have any uh, huge emotions? Were you angry at somebody? Were you uh, irritated because uh, you, you lost something or a car accident? Uh, what happened in your life that brought you out of alignment with the light? Okay. Look at your day. Was it filled with light? Did you wake up with light? Did you wake up grumbling? I have to do this, I have to do that. Look at your morning first. Was it filled with light? Or was it filled with grumbling and irritation? Did the spouse or the children say something unpleasant right away? Did that change the light? Now move through your day. Maybe you went to work, maybe you uh, had a project at home, maybe you had to go take care of the parents. What that next step, what happened in that next step? Was it filled with light? Were you joyful in the process of going towards that next responsibility? Or were you um, irritated? Was your mind disposed thinking about something else? Were you preoccupied with worries or concerns? Move through your day. Did you have significant emotional challenges? Co-workers, uh, family members, disturbing phone calls, uh, television stations, news, things that you read on your phones. Did any of these assist you or move you into a mental emotional space away from the light? Now move through your day even further. You're coming back home now if you were away. You're preparing for your evening. Maybe you had plans to relax. Something happened. Maybe uh, you just wanted a simple evening and it was interrupted by another phone call. Maybe you had uh, already huge mental emotional attachments to political based things and it turned out in a different way than you expected. And that changed your life. Take a look at the day. It's gone. Yesterday is gone. How many light filled moments did you allow into your life? How many of those light-filled moments were sucked away from you or altered because of what we perceive to be things outside of our control? In order to gather the light, it requires us to be responsible for the sources of input. You chose to come to today's live stream. You chose to receive <coughs> nourishment by the wisdom that Master Shah has brought to humanity, to receive light-filled guidance and words, blessings. This was your choice. For some of you, it's a twice a week uh, experience that you really 
make sure you give yourself because the rest of the time you're getting beat over the head by life. One of the students wrote, you know, the world sucks. And so, <clears throat> why is it that it's so difficult to process in this life? How can we find and sustain the light? We have to cut off those things in our world that suck it away from us. That's one of the many steps. I can't do it for you. Even when you come to watch and you feel better afterwards, how long does that sustain? Maybe an hour, maybe two, until a phone call comes and jerks you out of your happiness? Until a child, screaming child comes and jerks you out of your light? Until a coworker comes and says something gossipy? You have to be responsible for maintaining the light. We can do this through elevating our awareness and choosing what we surround ourselves with. If we cannot change what is surrounding us, such as the co-workers uh, or the family members that can sometimes mess with us, right? If we cannot change those, we can change how we react and respond to those things. But we can change other things that suck our light away from us by being consciously aware of what they are. If you're one of those people that's been caught up in the news cycles, there is an agenda. There is a mental, emotional, manipulation-based agenda. Don't buy into it. Disconnect. Choose the light. This is something that you do have control over. If you have uh, people in your life that utilize you to dump all of their tirade of their poor life, instead of trying to fix them, invite them to chant love, peace, and harmony with you. Refuse to listen to their stuff. Invite them to join you in a light and love filled process. And then you both win. You're not brought down by them dumping all over you. And they win because you brought light and love to the moment. They will either call you more because you lead them in singing love, peace, and harmony to shift their energy. Or they will call you less because all they're really looking forward to is call somebody else so that they can whine because that's what fills their needs and then you no longer have to be impacted by that look at the way life comes to you every day there are things that you cannot change in your life like the family the work environment these kinds of things these kinds of peoples will will be the way they are until they aren't and so you need to adjust your way of being around them then there are those things that you allow into your life, the sources of communication, which could be phone calls, how do you react and respond to them? It could be um, life experiences, you know, the person that pulls in front of you, how do you react and respond to that? It could be uh, the television or the telephone, how do you react and respond to that? Can you turn these things off? We have the ability to allow much more light into our life. It requires conscious willingness to make that conscious shift. Unless you enjoy the lack of light, unless you enjoy being in the mental emotional imbalanced place, of course you can remain there. In order to capture more light, we must, must, must open our hearts. Such a simple word to say, open our hearts. What does that mean, open my heart? It means open your heart center, your message center. It means open your heart center, your chakra. Well, what caused it to close? The things we just talked about. Do you think if you turn on any of the TV shows, the dramas that we so much enjoy? Why are dramas so enjoyable? You know, all of the crime dramas, all of the emotional romantic dramas, 
why do people get so involved in these kinds of dramas? Because it causes them to disconnect from their own suffering. They can literally go off in a la-la land and disconnect from their own suffering. It's a form of disconnect. It's not a form of uh, healing. It's not a form of light gathering. You could choose, if you're going to spend some downtime in front of the TV, to watch something uplifting. You may have to go outside of the normal TV channels to do that, but you can locate them. Watch cartoons, for example. Those can be quite funny, quite uplifting. Uh, do things that are controllable to uplift your light. If you watch these dramas, they just sustain a closed heart. They don't serve you. If you go to work, what is that? That's one big drama in many, many cases, right? And in our head, we may or may not like what we do. If you're one of those that fall in where we don't like what we do, how do you shift that? Buddha would say that if you bring love to everything you do, you can change your world. Imagine going to the job that you may have wrapped an unpleasant mindset around and changing entirely your perspective. That is bringing light. I am doing this, uh, this, let's say you do like I did soldering on the keyboard again and again and again, same thing. If you do it with love, the job becomes better. If you do it with love, then everyone down the line is impacted by that love. It's the butterfly effect. It's a very real thing. When you do anything with love, including that meeting, the job, that everyday typing in the same information, when you do anything that is uh, repetitive, like a job with love, you are bringing in light. You are opening your heart. What causes the heart to close? Just about everything we just mentioned. Let's talk about how family can mess with us. Children come in screaming, arguing with each other. Husband comes in complaining about the day. Wife comes in arguing about how somebody's gossiped about her. You know, family members, we can't remove them, right? They all have their uh, life experiences. We can teach them love and light. We are the emissaries of love and light. They will not change until they see the change coming from you. Our great uh, soul Gandhi has said the words, Be the change you want others to see. It literally starts with you. You must be the light. As you are compassionate and unattached to what others' reactions and responses are, the kids are screaming at each other, da 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 da. Okay? We all have that automatic. You know, Johnny, leave him alone. Or da 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 da. You know, shut up. Why not choose a light filled response? Pause what you're doing. Go to sit down with them. Give them a big heart filled hug. Tell child A you love them. Tell child B you love them. Tell them you love them so much. And you really would appreciate if they would be honoring and respectful of each other. Watch what happens. You open your heart to them, they'll just stop screaming at each other. They'll be fine. Now, what do you think would happen if you keep repeating that? What do you think would happen to their heart centers? What do you think would happen to their light? What about your light the next day when they're arguing each other less? These are very simple, heart-opening, light-filled activities that you can do to fulfill your light and sustain your light. You can apply the same thing to a husband. You can apply the same thing to a wife or a significant other. I love you so much. When you come home with these concerns, complaints, I want so much to remove them from you. But I also want you to know that it's, it's something that we need to work on so that it's revealed and released in a way that is light-filling and supportive for both of us. When you complain about that person, consider instead to communicate with them with love and light. If you do it long enough, that person will either leave because they can't handle the love and light, or they will be kinder to you. 
you can give that wisdom to the husband or wife. They can then bring that to their space. You have to be the emissary of the light. You have to be responsible. These are the things that you, uh, that are always in your face. The family, the job, those are always in front of you. And so your reaction and response to them dictates your light, dictates how open or closed the heart is. Sometimes we bring a heavy mental emotional stuff to our job because we had a difficult morning. Why do we have a difficult morning? Because we did not address it with love and light. Therefore we drag it into our day and we make more of an unpleasant day. Be in a place of love and light is simply about choose, choosing, choice. You would have a choice right now. You chose to be here. Congratulations. But after this live stream, where will you be? What is your choice? Sometimes we will get to the end of the day and realize that we reacted and we responded inappropriately. And therefore, we had a difficult, unlight filled day. So, what do you do about that at the end of the day? You can poo-poo on yourself. Is that bringing you light? No. You can be guilty. Is that bringing you light? No. You can love yourself and say, I love myself. I will do better. I will wake up tomorrow and I will watch my reactions and responses. I will choose to communicate with more love and more compassion. My light is important for me to sustain. I this is possible. This is available. It is a choice. The hardest part is not comprehending this wisdom. It is the application of it on a consistent basis. I'll tell you what will make it a lot easier. Waking up and doing a message center opening practice. If you start your day with an open heart center, it is much easier to choose love and light. It is much easier to catch yourself with an uh, automatic knee-jerk emotional mental reaction when those people that are so good at pushing our buttons enter our world, be it the family or the workplace or whatever, it might be the driver who cuts us off. We have those automatic reactions. They're built in. We've very practiced that for 20, 30, 40 years. In order to shift that, we must make a conscious choice upon waking up to give ourselves 15 minutes. Is that important enough to you? If you chose to give yourself 15 minutes in the morning, you wake up 15 minutes early, but you still got to brush your teeth, blah, blah, blah. You know, get up, shower, wake up, brush your teeth. But you gave yourself that extra 15 minutes before you go to make food, blah, blah, blah. During that 15 minutes, connect, turn on the song of love, peace, and harmony. Sit in front of tv.drshaw.com and meditate with who's ever on the channel at that time. These are just different examples. Do whatever works for you. Uh, turn on love, peace, and harmony. Meditate. What, what, do you, what is meditation? Sit and offer your gratitude to God. Sit and offer your gratitude to Muhammad, Buddha. Jesus, sit and offer your gratitude to your soul for the beautiful day that is about to reveal itself. What if you did a focused visualization where you see yourself walking through your day, sharing love and light with all of your co-workers? Just smile on your face, giving love and light to all those people that are not so nice. Giving love and light to your children, giving love and light to your parents. What if you did that in that 15 minutes in the Gathering the light and sustaining the light does not have to be difficult. It requires a little bit of desire to shift and change out of the old patterns that uh, we've adopted as normal. 
and agree to not do them anymore. A 15 minute morning meditation where all you do is you're in a place of gratitude, visualizing the light coming in. What do I do at the beginning of these live streams? Dear God, dear Tao, dear the Source, dear all the angels, healing angels, archangels, dear Jesus, dear da 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 please come, please come to bless all of us as appropriate. If your spiritual channels, spiritual eye is open, hundreds, thousands of beings of light come. You think they're here accidentally? No. When you call, they come. They do not like being around anger, irritation, you know, da da da. They don't like that at all. But if you wake up in the morning and you invite them, your heart is pure and happy. Oh, look at the beautiful light this person is emanating. Let's go and give them more light. This is their perspective. This is their heart. Like attracts like. They will come. You offer gratitude to them. Thank you so much for coming. I'm deeply honored. I know I can't see you, but I can feel you. you you're with me throughout the day. You protect me. You send me love. I cannot thank you enough. You send and give love. You visualize them in your heart center. This is not difficult. You don't have to do the same rote thing every day. You can get up in the morning and look back on yesterday and find all the things to be grateful for. And then look forward to that day for all the things that you have the possibility of being grateful for. Be grateful for your children. Be grateful for your spouse. Be grateful for your parents. So when you get up in the morning and start integrating with them, your love and light exudes to them. This is so much more than you. So much more than you. Do you think that if you're exuding love and light, it will positively or negatively impact those around you? What do you think? It's the butterfly effect. Throw the, uh, the, the pebble into the pond and it starts rippling outward. That child that received your love and light that morning had a much better day. Uh, got along that day with the other kids at school that may have been bullying them. In fact, maybe they showed love and light to those people because you were the teacher to them. How do you bring love and light and sustain it in your world? It is quite simple. You choose to do it. And by that and by that choice, you are impacting everybody else. So this is the simplicity of this process. Now I'm going to lead us on a very simple meditation where we move into gratitude, open our heart, and allow ourselves to bring in the love and light, clear the blockages, and position ourselves to sustain the love and the light. Okay? So everybody sit up straight. Bring your backs away from the back of the chair. You can place your hands in either prayer position or the uh, soul light, soul service hand position where the left hand drops in front of the heart center. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. If you can see me, your eyes are not closed. Close your eyes and breathe into your lower abdomen. Imagine this is in the first part of the morning. You've showered. You've done your basic activities. You've got your spot. Maybe it's outside the morning air. Maybe it's inside by the fireplace. Wherever it's at. Choose your morning spot. You're set for your 15 minutes to relax and spend time by yourself. Breathe in. And release. Start to smile as you breathe in and release. One more time, continue to smile and as you exhale, smile. Ah. Send your love to your home, your apartment, your house, wherever you live. Send your love. Thank you for your safety. You provide so much for me and my loved ones. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to this soft seat 
underneath me, making me comfortable. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to my bed for allowing me to sleep last night. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, my beloved soul, I am so grateful for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, let me invite in all the beings of light. Dear God, dear my beloved Creator, I am beyond grateful. I cannot thank you enough. Please forgive me my lack of gratitude. You have given me a beautiful husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. You have been giving me a beautiful life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear the soul of all the angels, healing angels, archangels, all of the beings of light, and you can list them one by one. Dear Jesus, dear Mother Mary, dear Buddha, I love you. Send them your love. I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you with all my heart. So beyond grateful for you. Could you please come to sit in my heart center? Open my heart. Help me to prepare for this day. Bless me to release reactions and emotional responses. Please bless me to receive any communication with love and light. Please bless me to communicate with love and light. I'm so grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now you're going to visualize doing this now in the morning and see yourself doing it with a smile, love and light, chipper. You hear your husband or spouse say, My, you're happy this morning. And you say, Yes. And I hope to be more like this every day. You visualize this. And then you say, Okay, the kids go off to school, or the husband goes off to work, or you got to go off to work. And now you're driving, or whatever the next condition may be. Visualize that with happiness. Send your love and joy. Turn on the music in your vehicle. Love, peace, and harmony. Visualize that. You are expanding your love and light in the morning, in this creative visualization, preparing yourself for this day. You go to work. What is your normal response? Oh God, I gotta deal with this today. Oh God, change the response. Make it love and light fill. I have the opportunity today to bring love and light, to change the way I've been looking at to bring more love and light to others. I have the opportunity today to play love, peace, and harmony in my workplace. Even if nobody hears it, it will change the environment. And then visualize at the workplace that day, getting along with everybody, smiling at those that may say unpleasant things. Send your love and light. Be grateful that you have money coming. Move into a place of gratitude for the money that you receive. You get a paycheck every week or every other week. Be grateful. With this money that I receive, I am able to take care of my family. I am able to put the milk and the orange juice and the eggs and everything in the refrigerator. Smile. Be grateful. Be grateful. Thank you, God. Without you, I would not have this job. Thank you, Jesus. Without you, I would not be able to survive. Thank, be grateful. Go through this workday. Now you're on your way home. What happens next? Do you have errands? What happens after that? Okay. Visualize whatever you do next with love and gratitude. So now you get back home. It's the latter part of your day and maybe you have a pattern. Are you going to turn on the news and listen to the latest gossip? Slander, anger, hatred, death, war? Do you love yourself enough to not do that? What is your choices that you can choose now? So in your morning meditation, visualize, oh, I'm going to go outside and go for a walk. Even if it's cold, I will dress warm. I will explore and enjoy the beautiful colors of the trees. I will spend time talking to the neighbor. And if that neighbor only talks about things that I don't want to hear, I will give them love and light and teach them the love and light. 
responses. Maybe not go talk to that neighbor again if they're unable to shift. Choose how you will be. When you wrap up your evening, do you wrap it up with gratitude? You can visualize all this in the morning. Now, from your heart center, as you complete this meditation, from your heart center, send your love to your family members. Right now, send to them. Love, 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 love. I love my family. I love my husband and wife. I love my children. Love my mom and dad. Love my brothers and sisters. And now send your love to your uh, other parts of your uh, midday. Maybe it's work. Maybe it's your job. I love, 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 love. Send your love. Send your love to your car and your house. I love, love, love you. Thank you for your service. Send your love to your body. I love, love, love my body. I love the muscles. Thank you for your service. I haven't honored you enough. I complain that you're sore. I love, 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 love you. Send your love to your soul. I love, 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 love you. What are you doing? You're opening your heart with love. Keep sending your love. And when you are done with the meditation, you'll have a smile love on your face and you wake up and you go back to your normal routine. This is your morning example of a 15-minute meditation. You can do any variation of that you'd like. You can apply any of the meditations I've already taught for opening your heart center. You can play love, peace, and harmony and just sing with that for 15 minutes. But I do recommend for five minutes, you see yourself moving through your day with love and light on your tongue, in your thoughts, so that you do not react and drain your light. You have to be responsible for those things that you cannot control outside of you and how you react and respond to them. Do not let them usurp and suck away your light. By spending about five minutes in that morning meditation, you have control over how you bring yourself to that day. So this is the wisdom. This is the solution. Tuesday, there was wisdom on how to bring more love, the three most powerful ways. Love song, love art, love field. Why not go back and watch the Tuesday live stream? I go into clear explanations how to bring love song into your life, how to bring love art into your life, how to develop a love field around you. Simply ask yourself, are you happy with your life 24-7? If you are not, you need love song, you need love art, you need a love field in your life. It will make this suggestion today of maintaining light much, 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 much easier. So much easier. We are given the tools. We are given the wisdom. No one's going to do it for you. If you're enjoying uh, being beat up throughout the day, it's your choice. This entire presentation is about choice. What will you choose? I am choosing now to say I love you. I am choosing now to complete this live stream so that I can move through my day with love and light and continue to serve others the best I can. I encourage you to watch this once or twice, to maybe make notes for yourself, to go set your alarm 15 minutes early so that you do everything you normally do. I encourage you to decide at what point during that morning, after I brush my teeth, whatever, this is when I'm going to do my 15 minutes of self-love and preparing myself for the day. I encourage you to mentally say, where am I going to do it at? Set yourself a little meditation pillow. Set up a little music station where you can listen to love, peace, and harmony. Have it prepared for yourself so that you put yourself on this simple 15-minute light-filled pattern. I encourage you to make this a part of your choice 
every day so that you can affect others. Because when you bring your light and your love, you are literally impacting in a very positive way humanity. So big. So I thank you so much for this opportunity to serve you. I invite you to two things. One is this weekend in Honolulu, there is a Soul Mind Body Alignment Retreat. For, uh, and it is recorded if you can't make the exact times that it is. It goes over so many deep, wonderful, soul-filled wisdoms. How to get to the root causes of all of our blockages and tremendous wisdom and practices eight hours each day to release the blockages and uplift yourself so that you can start your life on a whole new spiritual filled trajectory. It is also the precursor to becoming a Tao Hands Healer. And almost all of you, if you don't already uh, have Tao Hands, want to serve others and bless others and heal others. You can do that. You can be a Tao Hands Healer, but it requires the precursor, of course. And so I recommend that you attend that. Kristen has already posted the link. Just look at Kristen Rojas' chat. And it's uh, only $135 for two days of huge wisdom and education, huge blessings, more blessings than the money, definitely. And you're going to feel so light and love-filled afterwards, and you'll put yourself on a trajectory that will help you and your family forever. If you become one of the healers at a later time, it will change your world. So that's the first call. The second one is to join me Sunday. Every Sunday now, I am singing Love, Peace, and Harmony, about a half hour. Uh, out of that half hour, the first 10 or so minutes is waiting for everybody to come, and then we, we chant and sing Love, Peace, and Harmony, specifically for those with the condition of cancer. Gather your friends, uh, have them come. If you know anybody with cancer, have them come. We will serve them. Uh, they can learn the higher wisdoms of unconditional service to others. So these are my two callings, and it's Sunday, 6 p.m., uh, Hawaii time. So write that down and then go to Google and figure out what time that is in Arizona. So there are some people who have come in late. I have just, I'm wrapping up now, I'm finishing now. This will become a video in just one minute. Please watch it. I tell you, heaven gave me a score of 100 for this video. It will serve you well if you apply the wisdom. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Watch the recording. Bye-bye.